So, so what we are, thank you very much for joining us. You and uh, accidentally were very, very excited actually. Um, when uh, the University of San Diego and uh, Eva and Daniel and Aaron, uh, we discussed this week, um, we've been having a number of series, so this would be the third session of, of uh, speaking about network patterns, patterns, uh, network thinking, and with the uh, figure of Buckminster Fuller in the background. Today is an extraordinary day because it happens to be uh, the 119th birthday of Buckminster Fuller. He was born today in, in, uh, in 1895, and uh, we're celebrating that. We're very fortunate to have uh, Joaquin Krause with us, who is uh, an authority, uh, author of Your Private Sky, uh, uh, with us. And uh, I will be speaking about our project on Buckminster Fuller at the University of San Diego uh, and at uh, Princeton, and then we also thought that it was very important to have a contemporary perspective. Uh, yesterday we were very fortunate to be joined by Hanif Gar, uh, who is an engineer from London and who is the structural engineer at uh, Harvard Strand School of Design. And today we are joined by Maria Carrillo, who has a contemporary critic on the environment that is grounded on Fuller. Uh, and she will give the contemporary perspective. Uh, but we're very, very grateful to have Joaquin, Nerea. We're very grateful to the organizers of the pavilion to let us occupy it. And without uh, more, I will turn it over to Joaquin to start the session. Thank you so much for coming, Joaquin. Yeah, first of all, thank you, thank you so much for inviting me, Daniel. Uh, it's uh, really a pleasure to to meet you for the first time, <laughs> uh, and I'm, uh, I'm sure that uh, you will give uh, the research about uh, uh, not only Buckminster Fuller, but basically Buckminster Fuller a million parts. Uh, and uh, I was waiting for a long time that somebody is taking up. Uh, so, um, I, uh, uh, I would like to uh, raise a question uh, which is really to the core uh, of, um, uh, the, uh, of the problem of patents um, and uh, invention of net network construction. Uh, and uh, uh, this was, I, I think, in the lifetime of Buckminster Fuller, uh, uh, always uh, a question in behind. Um, was he influenced or did he know about the forerunner of him and uh, this is the uh, inventor uh, of the Zeiss planetarium, uh, Walter Bautzfeld, a great German engineer uh, who uh, in invented the Zeiss planetarium in 1922. Um, and uh, with the Science Planetarium, there's a, a lot of similarity uh, of uh, what Buckminster Fuller, in his own way, de 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 developed. Uh, and uh, I found, found it especially uh, um, uh, 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 very telling very telling of the work of Buckminster Fuller. When I discovered the manuscript by making the research for Your Private Sky, um, where the first idea was uh, fixed, um, what he could do uh, with great circuit constructions. And in this paper, uh, in this paper, he uh, noted um, it, it, it had a headline that the true planetarium, the true planetarium. So the first idea uh, of the geodesic dome was a planetarium, a true planetarium, not a science planetarium. And 
and I will speak about what could that mean. It's not clear. Okay, this is a photograph of 1926, which was well known uh, in the architectural scene, published all over the world, and uh, shows uh, the people climbing uh, in a network construction of very slender uh, rods and nodes. Uh, and uh, joyful, uh, the construction workers are, uh, 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 are experiencing uh, the, the completely new situation that they, uh, that they are held by such uh, ephemeral network. <laughs> you know. So these rods are around 60 centimeters and um, uh, six to one and a half uh, centimeters. So it's really very, very spidery. And what is really revolutionary with, with that construction is that it is a completely um, dissolution of mass, massive matter. And you know, Zeiss in Vienna, in Germany, was an optical factory. Uh, they have nothing to do with building construction. But uh, they had, had done a lot of research over generations. And I found on one of the forerunners uh, of Bauersfeld uh, in the late 19th century a description of the retina of the eye. And this description uh, it is the, the structure of, of the retina is the geodetic structure. So, we have what I call the dissolution of massive matter on the one hand, and we have the resolution of, of pictures in the retina with our eyes. And the principles are the same. So, uh, so uh, this is, I think, uh, uh, this is important to say uh, that, uh, um, that the, the network has the power to, to resolve and dissolve what, sh what seems to be compact. And uh, I later saw a, pho a photograph uh, of, a, uh, uh, of a fossil dinosaur eye the retina, uh, and it had exactly a geodesic structure. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I have no copy of it. I saw it somewhere. It, 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 you know. But uh, the, this, uh, the, this led, led me uh, to, to, to that uh, idea of resolution uh, and, uh, and the power of, net, of network. And uh, so the size, the size structure uh, was, uh, it was in the beginning, um, uh, no, uh, the size structure is extremely similar to that of what Bart 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 uh built uh, as uh, the geodesic dome. This is, seems to be a, a detail uh, or a close-up. Size, but it is a quarter of a century later, in 1950, the, the first geodesic dome with a geodesic grid uh, in Montreal, uh, where people uh, had the same experience, uh, joyful playing uh, in, in that grid and uh, making the experience that it is bearing. You know. um, so, um, uh, some words to my own. Uh, Biography mm -hmm. combined with Buckminster Fuller. This is a, a book, uh, 1970, I, I edited. It was my first uh, attempt to translate Buckminster Fuller's language, which was a challenge. 
Uh, and I had to do this because professional translators uh, were, were not able to, to do that. And that brought me uh, uh, to, uh, to doing that, translating education automation. I and mean, in that uh, edition of 1970, this was a little uh, a book series I edited with a friend, a typographer, uh, and we called it Project, uh, uh, Modelle, Project and Models, and it was really a good program. It started with the number one, with Buckminster Fuller, that was in 68, but I didn't translate it, only wrote some commentaries in an index. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we developed a kind of hypertext structure for uh, giving commentaries, um, and this was number four, uh, education uh, automation, and there, uh, if, you know, as a, as a European, as a, as a German, knowing of this uh, science planetarium, in, in my commentary, I showed the science planetarium, it was just a question uh, uh, addressed to Buckminster Fuller. What do you say to that? Uh, 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 you know? So, and, and it was in combination with a, uh, uh, with a, uh, uh, with, with a scrap uh, domes uh, uh, in uh, Colorado, Drop City. <coughs> and, uh, this was 1970. And then some years later, some years later, uh, in Lloyd Kahn's shelter, big, uh, a, 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 a big, big uh, the book, uh, uh, he uh, included the same example, the miracle of, of Jena, you know, by the Bausfeld Science Planetarium, Buckminster Fuller, did you know? Uh, uh, have you ever seen? Uh, uh, what, what is it about? And here, in, in, in that, you can see that it is a geodesic structure, not the, the term didn't exist. The term didn't exist. The term geodetic construction was introduced by Barnes Wallace in 1929. So we had the term. Here, 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 you know. But the geometry is quite clear, it's class one. And none of, of the Fullerians, and I myself a Fullerian, <laughs> no, 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 no question. none of the Fullerians. Uh, 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 Say yeah, it's clear. It's a, ge a geodesic uh, class number one. Uh, even John Clinton didn't, didn't, didn't do that. He, 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 you know, so, um, uh, so, but Lloyd Kahn in uh, in that book, he he, 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 uh, he it, it, it was that edition of Shelter in 1973. Uh, it was um, uh, it was um, three years uh, after. Uh, after the own book. Okay, you know? And uh, in, in both editions, you see that in the own book, Buckminster Fuller is the authority, and then uh, Lloyd Kahn is exchanging the authority. Buckminster Fuller is not mentioned at all, but all the geodesic stuff is inside, uh, and only Bauersfeld is the new hero. Uh, 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 so uh, this is the uh, dome book, number two, from 1969, I think. Yeah, and uh, you have that, those uh, wonderful ph ph photographs of joyful building. The big building as a process. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The experiencing uh, of building a new structure. And that was, uh, in my eyes, what uh, was so fundamental for the hippie culture to build something, something really completely new, a new pattern, uh, and uh, and a pattern that seemed to tell something, something about the world. Uh, uh, so back to Bauer's right? oh yeah, it's not very bright, you can see really nothing. Uh, 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 okay, Bauer's uh, right, it's uh, um, before World War One. He came as an, as an engineer, uh, scientific trained engineer. That was that generation of scientific, first scientific uh, 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 engineers with a doc, doc, uh, uh, doctorate. Yeah. Uh, they came to, to, to the factories. And, and Bauer's 
Ahmed is very, very interesting in, in his kind of research. What did, what did he do in, in, in that factory? He became the chief constructor uh, and, uh, and also, uh, uh, also um, the leading figure of the company. And the invention, the invention didn't start at all with those, uh, uh, with, with, with the dome construction. The invention started with a machine uh, that, uh, that, that could uh, simulate uh, all the stages of uh, the starry sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is a pro the prototype uh, which was uh, in, uh, in 1923. They, they had, had built that pro the pro prototype, and you can see, uh, uh, and you can, you can see that there are two um, uh, uh, two parts. That one here, that is a cylindric, uh, a kind of cylinder with ro rotating uh, spotlights for the planets, and this <coughs> is a spherical body uh, for projecting the the, uh, the fixed stars. You know, so it's combined. It's a wonderful machine, you know, and it, uh, it, it can produce uh, all, all the locations on the Earth and all the constellations, all the constellations. So it is an electromechanical solution, it's not electronic, but uh, uh, electromechanical, and this is the starry sky projector. And of course, it's a geodesic. <laughs> it's derived from the icosahedron. And uh, this is the drawing of Bowersfeld. And you see the characteristic uh, 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 alternating hexagons and pentagons. And, uh, and all of those pentagons tell you it is, uh, it, it is a double curvature. It, it, you know, otherwise, you can't do that with, with hexagons. And it is also uh, like uh, a sketch of what we have as a, 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 so a soccer football. Uh, this is, these are the fields of projection in, uh, in the dome. And this is a soccer football. <laughs> and this soccer fo uh, football changed in the 1960s. And it was an invention independent of planetarium and also independent of Buckminster Fuller. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it, it, was, it was a great invention because uh, they had that uh, black and white uh, uh, TV, mm -hmm. the, the television, uh, with, with, uh, with, with a very low resolution, you know, you know. And they couldn't change that, but they could do something with the object that is moving and took the grid of the object that is moving. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so it's the first popular um, uh, application of geodesic gridding, you mm -hmm. know, but people didn't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the ball before was this, and you see it's, uh, it, it's derived from the cube. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's a, cub a cubicle making a, make a, 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 a ball out of a cube. Yeah, that's typical uh, European theory. Uh, <laughs> so, and, and here you, you see the uh, projector of the size planetarium with those two components, of the plan for the planets and the starry sky, and, uh, and uh, the sphere projector for the starry uh, sky is based on the hypersahedron, and then it is the truncated hypersahedron, which is a fly there. And this, uh, you, um, uh, <coughs> and this you can further divide, uh, and you uh, you come to one kind of a geodesic grid. You know that um, uh, these are illustrations from uh, from Kahn's book. Uh, and uh, the same structure uh, became very, very pr prominent in 1990 uh, when uh, carbon 60 uh, was uh, 
was produced in masses, yeah, 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 yeah. discovered in uh, 85, two years after Buckminster Fuller's death. And, uh, it, and, and the, the, the researchers, uh, they named it after Buckminster Fuller. Why did they name it after Buckminster Fuller? Because uh, two of them, uh, Koto and Swami, had been uh, in the U.S. Pavilion, Expo 67, and Harold Croto was so impressed. He, he had a sense for design and architecture. You know. And when they were researching, they had those diagrams, you, 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 you know, with those peaks, um, and, and had to find out how could the structure be? And this is a, uh, uh, this is a complicated uh, a phase of transformation of those informations about the, 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 the peaks with the, at some, uh, at, uh, at some um, points of, um, uh, of uh, atomic numbers, you know? And the peak was very strong with 60. So we had the question, a structure with 60 atoms, what could that be? And Harold Proto uh, said, uh, said, yeah, uh, it reminds me of the Expo Dome of Buckminster Fuller. Let's go to the library and look in the, bo in the books, uh, because there's su uh, su such a lot of experimental work in it. And then they, they, they got those books, went to the kitchen, uh, with uh, paper, uh, skissers, and glue, uh, and did the modeling. <laughs> and they, uh, they, they, they had a model in mind, you know. Uh, it was a little bit dark, uh, <laughs> that model, and they had to, had to, to, uh, to try how, how the, uh, the, model, uh, the, the structure could be for, uh, for the molecule. Uh, and then uh, they found it. And because of that inspiration, the Koto uh, 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 and Spawn said, we name it after Buckminster Fuller. So that we have C60 um, carbon molecule, which is a cage, a, a, a cage model. All the other structures of the carbon, you know, they were notated in a uh, 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 <coughs> Kekulé uh, notation with um, uh, uh, only with hexagons, you know, it's a he hexagon um, uh, notation system. All the 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 uh, the, 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 the carbon uh, compounds, all the carbon compounds are notated in that system, uh, and uh, so. Uh, uh, some the commentaries were uh, on the discovery of the C60 uh, that chemistry would become no, uh, 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 would no longer be flat. Uh, it became uh, it became um, uh, three dimensional, uh, and it was to be fought in space with that cage structure. So the whole family uh, of, uh, uh, of C60 and, 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 and other mo uh, molecules uh, um, became a huge family, uh, uh, the Buckminster Fullerines, you know, <laughs> so the whole family got, uh, got that, that name. I think uh, Buckminster Fuller is much more popular uh, in, in the sciences than in architecture. That's a scandal. That's absolutely a scandal. And uh, I, I like really to speak here at the Biennale with such a type of the fundamentals of architecture. What are the fundamentals of architecture? Where is that research? Uh, if not in the work of Buckminster Fuller and those guys who did really the, the, the research uh, into what architecture is meaning for others. Yeah, yeah. Especially for the scientists, they speak of the architecture of molecules, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But the architects always had the problem with Buckminster Fuller. 
uh, you know, they didn't want him to have a, a, as a colleague or, or mm. some, somebody who was included. You know? And this is a very interesting uh, history, and it's mostly about Philip Johnson, mm. uh, and, uh, 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 and they always uh, tried to exclude people like him, who really had done fundamental research. Fundamental research. Okay. And if, uh, if, if, if I say uh, uh, that uh, this, uh, uh, this relation of, uh, uh, of the resoluting power of the eye you know, is uh, founded in, in, in geodesic structure, one asks why isn't that in the horizon of architects? Okay, that's a little bit polemics. <laughs> but um, uh, I show you, uh, I show, show you uh, some pictures um, from the family of Bowers, uh, the family, the erection of, uh, of the dome. So we had seen that machine, that projection machine, uh, and, that, uh, and that needed, of course, the total environment. It needed a spherical screen, not a building. And Bausfeld uh, thought uh, only in terms of the screen. He, he wanted to have, uh, uh, to have a, a half spher a spherical screen, nothing more, not a building. Uh, you know, and developed with the same principles, he divided the, 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 the sphere for the projector, uh, he, he, uh, he, he developed a structure for the screen, and here we, we, we see that screen, uh, you know, and then when they were experimenting uh, with, with, with that um, uh, with, with, with that network uh, construction came the idea uh, of an engineer uh, uh, of, of, of that building company. They were uh, they were uh, um, e e erecting uh, the, the, the the buildings for science. That there was a new patent of the U.S. Uh, to spray concrete. Yeah, it's gunite. The gunite uh, allowed you to spray concrete. In German, it's Torkheit, and they uh, introduced that on the market exactly at, at the time when they when they erected that uh, that screen. You know, so um, and then they experimented uh, with, with that concrete, and uh, you see the scaffolding here. Uh, and it's sprayed from outside, and uh, in, 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 in the end, uh, it's a little bit disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and, and so it, be it becomes a kind of building, um, uh, but uh, it's not really architecture, of, of, of course. It, it, it was built. Uh, it was built on the roof of a factory, mm -hmm. and that meant. Uh, the structure had to be extremely light lightweight, uh, and uh, uh, and it was uh, it was uh, only designed for the purpose to test the machine, oh, and, wow. uh, it, uh, well, and to protect the machine and test it uh, because it was built for the uh, the museum in, in, in Munich, the largest museum in in, in Munich. Uh, and uh, they were the client, uh, and, you know, uh, and uh, therefore they needed a, 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 a test phase of the, uh, of the machine. And that happened on the size wolf. And that, it worked uh, wonderful. Uh, and they opened it, they opened it in 1924 uh, to the public. And here you see such a, such a group visiting uh, the, the planetarium on the roof of the size factory. And it's not you know, exactly that group of the Bauhaus that visited the Zeiss uh, uh, planetarium, but we know uh, from Adolf Meyer that he went with the students of the uh, Bauhaus uh, uh, in Weimar to the Zeiss planetarium, and it was 
uh, especially for uh, for for Arab Maya, it was uh, it, it, it was uh, uh, an inspiration to try out new methods of building. Uh, but also Walter Borkius and Nazlo Mohaidoj discussed it. We know it from a, a notebook of Ethan Borkius. You know, they discussed it, and I think they, it was really for uh, for Mohaidoj especially. Uh, it was the model of his thinking uh, of vision in motion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and he included the size planetarium in the uh, second of, of his Bauhaus books, uh, from, from Material to Architectura. Uh, at the end of the book uh, is the, that net, network for, for, for the photo I showed in the beginning. And he had the sense you know, you know, to, uh, to understand that there is happening something completely new uh, with, with, with such a kind of structure. Okay, but disappointing. <laughs> this, this is a point, but uh, on the other hand, you, you know, it, it's really the birth of uh, a monocoque shell construction uh, 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 which spread it out then in the 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s, uh, you, you know, all over the world. All the engineers were trained in that. Uh, and, um, and it allowed uh, to, uh, to make an extremely thin shell. The relation is better you know, than in an egg, uh, uh, um, uh, in a, a, a hen's egg. <laughs> you know, it's even better. It's four centimeters, and I, I think he, here is uh, the diameter 60 meters or, or so. And after that, it, uh, it next was, uh, was applied uh, to a factory building in Vienna uh, with the roof of a, um, uh, of, of a fac factory building. And this is a lo long story of uh, how that was further developed. Of course, uh, it was um, the, 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 first, the first application was uh, to build planetarium, uh, planetariums uh, all over the world. Yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, and uh, one of the engineers, uh, Bischinger, he made that diagram, which is really uh, in, in, in interesting and relates the weight uh, to the clear span. In, 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 you know? And you see, uh, you see the dome construction of St. Peter in here. <laughs> then a better one in Breslau, the Jahrhunderthalle in Breslau, and then here the science planetarium, and, and it makes clear that this allowed a, a, a huge clear span with that construction. And it's re really interesting what, uh, what, what was planned uh, with, with, with that shell construction uh, in the 1930s, but I don't tell that story now. <laughs> uh, it's only to show you that exactly what, what Mark Minister Fuller is emphasizing, uh, that is uh, extraordinary re relation of weight uh, to, uh, to, to the enclosure of, of space and the clear span, you know, that, uh, that they also discovered that at the science factor factory, together with, uh, with the, uh, the concrete building company, Dubiak. Uh, 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 okay, that was built in 1926 in Vienna, but it's very, uh, it's no good architecture, you know, it's, <laughs> um, it's, uh, uh, it's nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is the design of Adolf Meyer, who mm. understood that, uh, that principle, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it, it, you can see, uh -huh. this, he, uh, he is, he's, and he also wrote a beautiful text, uh, about what that meant, that invention. Okay, okay. So it was exactly in the time when he uh, when he left the Bauhaus and Gropius uh, went to Dessa uh, and developed uh, sh uh, short later the uh, to Tokyo Theater. Yeah, yeah. The Tokyo Theater project is strongly influenced by the Science Planetarium because never before you had, you had, you had seen a uh, modern architect a network a dome construction which, he, uh, which should be used here. Uh, and I make a jump to 1970. Uh, it's not Buckminster Fuller. Uh, 
it is in the tradition of science planetarium and so on by Max Megerlinghausen, a German engineer who invented Mero's uh, system. Uh, and uh, it, uh, it is built with, together with Bormann for uh, the uh, uh, composer Stockhausen. And Stockhausen wanted to have a space in which the sounds are moving, really. So it was, uh, it was an, a, 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 another version of the planetarium, an acoustic planetarium, one could say. And this, uh, this ha happened in uh, 1917. And of course, you see the influence uh, of the Expo Dome. You know, Osaka is very interesting. You see, all of them are building geodesics. Mm -hmm. uh, but here is a very interesting uh, application uh, for using that uh, uh, and creating uh, move, moving sounds in space. That was uh, Stockhausen's I I uh, idea. Uh, okay. So, uh, as architecture, it was very conventional and monumental. This is Arnold Planetarium uh, in Chicago in 1930. And, uh, but of course it was, it was published and uh, was a great success, a great success as, uh, uh, also uh, as a location for learning about uh, outer space. Uh, and it played, uh, it played a role for preparing the astronauts, for preparing the astronauts uh, for, for the, their life in space. You know, they had to go, I think, for a week or so uh, uh, through the planetarium uh, to, uh, to have that, um, uh, that, uh, that, to learn that navigation uh, 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 from constellations. Uh, 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 so that, that was one of the, pre of the preparing of Space. But Mr. Fuller, I think, uh, uh, was also impressed at that time, early, really early, uh, with Conning Tower project, where you have in the center all those media projections uh, and, uh, and uh, in a circle around uh, the participants, the audience, and, uh, and so on. So I, I think this was. Uh, Really, when, when he knew when when he knew about the planetarium, but uh, it was just the disposition, the dispositif, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, not uh, the network. Nowhere had to be seen. Only the construction workers, uh, you know, could uh, could see that, and, and it was hidden, and nobody saw it. Uh, so. Uh, but this, uh, I think, this disposition was uh, was really uh, 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 was really influential. And with Buckminster Fuller, I, I think this early earliest drawing I could identify the Lightful Houses drawing, which is not very good to, to be seen here now, uh, gives uh, a very good information about who he is in my eyes. I was so deeply impressed when I found it that I could identify that this was the first step of developing that what later uh, what was called the 4D house or the uh, Dimension house. That he is looking not for just a type of building, but that uh, he is looking uh, uh, like a satellite uh, from far uh, and envisioning the Earth. Uh, you know, the Earth, that is uh, his, his scale. Uh, uh, and the verticals, the verticals on, those, uh, on, on this planet. And uh, this is so interesting, what, uh, what, what is he collecting here as what could be, uh, what could be used as a model for design. You know, and it includes also the technical the technical things here, like the mooring mass of, of, of the airship, or that um, um, that uh, power uh, uh, power masts, uh, but also the tree, 
yeah, 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 yeah. So technical artifacts and also from, uh, and also uh, organic, um, uh, they could be described uh, as uh, as uh, specific systems, and uh, this shows where the systems approach begins, yeah. uh, and that he then at, uh, uh, in, in the beginning 60s, 60s with, came together with Ludwig von Bertalanffy and they understood it at once you know, because they had the same idea uh, of the system theory. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I, uh, yes, very important is these are his coordinates at that time. You, you know, it's uh, the, the, the love axis and the light axis. Uh, this is Allegra here, half a year old, you, you know, it's a very personal statement, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the word, but seen from a human being, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. and he defines, he defines it, 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 himself as a human being, and is including it in the, in, in the picture. That is really great. Um, uh, uh, okay, that's from Mr. Fuller, and uh, we, we know what came out of that. So very interesting in the designs uh, of the 4D house is uh, that he uh, comes to that um, uh, to the hexagonal uh, floor ground and uh, at that time uh, is trying uh, to uh, define uh, the, uh, the, the scales um, and the um, and the measures, uh, not in terms of space, but in terms of time. It's, it's counting, you, you know, in intervals from the center outside. Like waves that, that, that are spread, spreading out, you know, like, 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 and this pattern, this pattern he thought not to be as a, as a plain one, but he wanted to model that pattern in space. And you see that very, very, very clearly later, uh, that, uh, that he is trying to, to model such an exploding, uh, uh, omnidirectional uh, 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 structure to all sides. It's going to all sides. Uh, and um, this plays a role in the early th 30s when uh, he and his friends thought about the expanding universe. This was a new discovery that universe is uh, not the only, that, that, that the galaxy is not the only one. There are more galaxies and that the universe is expanding. And this is a sculpture of Isama Noguchi that is expanding universe as a, a, as a sculpture. And back in the full, in the end, develop that matrix. And this allows the really symmetrical growth. Uh, exactly what, what, he, what he's stating in, in, in the beginning, uh, that he is interested in, um, uh, in, in, in that space, space type re re relation. And, uh, and, and this, uh, uh, he finds in a, in, in a, in a matrix uh, which allows symmetrical growth and therefore uh, could be used as a matrix for all those processes uh, we have in, in nature. Uh, uh, light, uh, explosions, everything, everything. All energy transformations, wave phenomena, you could uh, you could um, um, you could apply that, that matrix. Uh, so and um, in the uh, mid mid forties, when Wichita House is uh, uh, is uh, published, you, you you see some of wonderful photographs. But Mr. Fuller, he, he, he's not interested at, at all in the, in the, in the midget house. It's ready, you know, the prototype is ready. Uh, he's, uh, he, he, he's, uh, he's occupied with 
with the geometrical investigations. Mm -hmm. And I think some of his old colleagues at, uh, at for, uh, Fortune, mm -hmm. they introduced the, those, the, they smuggled it in, the, the, the photos uh, of, the, of that crazy Buckminster Fuller, who is working with those space cells uh, and uh, had no, has no, nothing to do with the, uh, with the, the rich house. So the, this is uh, this is that uh, that model uh, for uh, for the mat matrix, and you see that uh, that is very important uh, to combine uh, or to draw the line from uh, the. Uh, uh, from from um, from the corners to the center, you know, and this uh, and it's it's a, a matrix because uh, those radial uh, uh, connections are equal the circumferential of the, on the periphery, so it's an equilibrium, and therefore he uses that as his stone of the cornerstone. The cornerstone, yeah, yeah. yeah of, of his philosophy, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, then it goes it goes deeper uh, that this structure uh, is uh, generated by a process of packing of spheres, mm -hmm. um, and the packing of spheres generates all the elementary forms. You know, if you speak about form, you have. A, 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 you, you have to, uh, to, to look how the sphere packings uh, are uh, producing uh, them. And one could say there are two approaches or, or two, um, two methods uh, what Mr. Fuller is using. The one uh, is uh, to produce the great, great circles by spinning all, all, uh, all the platonic so-called solids uh, around this axis of symmetry, mm -hmm. and, and he gets uh, the, 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 the great circle moment, and the other way uh, is um, uh, to, uh, to pack spheres. Yeah. These are the, the, the <coughs> main, main approaches. Well, nothing is, uh, yeah. And in this, in, in this interesting, uh, phase of, uh, of re research, he discovers that in his cube icosahedron that can grow symmetrically, that there are included two ways of packing spheres. Yeah, you know, the cubical one and the hexagonal one. And you see in that sketch that that could be a kind of switch. Yeah, 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 you know? It could be a kind of switch uh, of two discrete um, um, uh, 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 constellations. And this goes back to Kepler. Kepler is the first one we know of that he investigates the, uh, the, the method of uh, closed uh, packing uh, of spheres. And he has, uh, has already discovered there are, two, there are two ways of packing spheres. And, um, uh, and one can be transformed in, in, in the other. But it is only uh, in the illustrations of, of Kepler play. <coughs> and what is what Professor Fuller is doing uh, is going into space. So and then uh, then he comes uh, to that uh, astonishing. Uh, uh, invention uh, or discovery, both it's a discovery and an invention uh, of the of the uh, jitterbug, uh, be because his cube octahedron, you see this or, or, uh, alternate uh, alternating triangles and um, squares, mm -hmm. you know, and he's rotating that thing uh, around the axis, the symmetry axis. Uh, of the triangles and sees that the whole structure, if the, the, uh, if the corners are connected, they keep connected. Uh, if, you, if you turn that, you can 
you, you can transform the whole structure. It is a little bit sh uh, shrinking, and um, they, they, they are uh, 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 in, a, in a, diag a diagonal contracting, and so uh, is the first phase of the jitterbug uh, running from the cube octahedron to the icosahedron to the octahedron. This is the first zone. And a key, in my understanding, of Buckminster for the structural research is that he very early states um, that they need flexible joints. Fle a piece of rubber. Yeah, yeah. And he's playing with his fingers with, with, with that rubber uh, and forms a tetrahedron. Uh, okay, with his fingers. Uh, okay. So use flexible joints to find out what is self-stabilizing. That was the, the sense of, 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 it, of it. And so um, you see in the uh, in, in, in the agenda part, we built that for our exhibition of private sky. You could uh, go inside that uh, and uh, you turn it a little bit. You, you, you know, the triangles are really structures. Uh, they keep their shape, but the squares are only openings, you know, and they fold together. And you come from the cube octahedron a little bit to, uh, to the icosahedron, and then even more uh, to the octahedron, yeah. you know, and it folds to, uh, together. And then it goes uh, uh, further, further from the octahedron to the tetrahedron, and from there to the eightfold triangle. And this is only a zero phase that the structures are going through. And you see it here beautifully in the old uh, 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 slides of Buckminster Fuller. Uh, then the platonic bodies, the platonic solids, platonic solids are only phase transitions. And you even can go through that zero phase, and after that it is also uh, expanding to tetrahedron, octahedron, icosahedron, cube octahedron, and that's the most expanded phase we have. So this is uh, the genetic uh, transformation uh, as a process of continual transformation. The interesting thing is that it also works as a transformation of discrete states you know, as jumps, as jumps. Uh, um, and, and, and you can show that with, with closed packing. You, know. you, you have in the cube of the hero, in, in that constellation, you have a center. You know. If you take that center away, the whole structure is, is uh, collapsing, collapsing to the icosahedron, and uh, this is uh, a switch. Yeah, you know, it's not a continuum; it's quantum leap. Hmm. It's a true quantum leap, and the students in the, at the Black Mountain College understood that very good because they called it a quantum machine. It's a true quantum machine because it's one quantum that makes the difference between the Kilbertahedron and the Icosahedron. Yeah, yeah, you, know, you take away one and then it collapses a, a little bit. And it, and it, 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 it explains also uh, why the Icosahedron uh, is uh, is so, so much in use in, in nature uh, because it's really a closed system and it has in the middle uh, you, you know, the, the, the center is away it has a little gap in, in, in the middle and it's the smallest house we have it's, uh, it's used by the virus the virus is using that for the DNA. These are the protein shells, and it's perfectly protected. 
and can, can survive. Or, uh, it's not living, you know. It's not living, but it's a house for the DNA. So it's the smallest architecture we know. A real house. And um, so, uh, so, so from here to there uh, is from an, uh, uh, from a phase of the model uh, to the building structure. And that is used by, by Mr. Fuller. Yes, yes. Uh, Okay. Uh, uh, we ran out. Of, uh, it, it, it came on. Yeah. Now it's it's coming back. It's coming back. Yeah. Okay. So it's not uh, not so important. You, I think you uh, it, it, you you saw it, uh, that um, uh, that that the uh, icosahedral structures and all that is derived from uh, icosahedral uh, structure uh, gives indeed uh, rigidity. Uh, rigidity. And the problem in the sciences was that uh, that that rigidity of icosahedral structures was were not acknowledged uh, in crystallography. In crystallography, they had the rule uh, of the um, uh, 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 of, of the. Um, um, well, it's not the grid, uh, it's um, uh, in German it's the Gitter, Christine Gitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a yeah, it's a framework, yeah, uh, of course, but uh, it's excluding it's excluding uh, five fold symmetry. The other symmetries are in, in, in there. So it was a rule in crystallography uh, that five-fold symmetry, seven-fold uh, symmetry is not uh, it, 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 it is not to be found in rigid structures, and that was the reason why the the, the group of researchers uh, who were uh, exploring the uh, the protein shells of the viruses in 1959, Aaron Kluge and the others in London, Birkbeck College, uh, they uh, invited Buckminster Fuller to explain why a five-fold symmetry, uh, including the structure, could have the most rigidity uh, 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 and he explained them the jitterbug. <laughs> and, you know, and one of the scientists, um, uh, uh, of the Chris Telegraph, translated Buckminster Fuller's um, jitterbug transformation, the first part of it, uh, in the language of crystallography. And so it was introduced uh, that uh, that five-fold symmetry could be also a case of crystals, and a lot of discoveries after that had to do with exactly that problem of five-fold symmetry. Yeah. So, uh, and several uh, Nobel prizes. So they got the Nobel prize. Uh, no, no Nobel Prize and um, Aaron Klug, and he became, became the, the, uh, the uh, director of, uh, 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 of the um, Royal Society. He gave a very interesting interview, and this interview was only about Agnes. And this interesting collaboration they had, uh, and uh, how he helped them to understand something they could make clear with their dogma. 
So it's a really interesting, uh, uh, interesting case. Um, okay, the, the digital transformation has even more aspects. We don't have all the platonic solids in it. Uh, it's uh, the illustration of Kepler, and you see the double code uh, of the uh, of the elements uh, uh, that in, that in Plato you you you, you have. The idea of transformation in nature, <coughs> so to say, as a uh, stuff and uh, energy transformation, but also a, 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 as a geometrical transformation, and he can't solve it. He's looking for, for uh, the standard triangle, but didn't split, didn't didn't split the the, the solids and didn't investigate the relation uh, of, the, uh, uh, of the outer uh, um, uh, panels uh, to, the, to the center. So the investigation of Buckminster Fuller was done in the, uh, in the time of the Manhattan pro uh, Project. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's splitting the, the uh, uh, platonic solids so, and he's coming up with, with, with those results uh, of the, uh, of the uh, isometric matrix. Uh, and, um, and you know, in that cube octahedron, you have equivalents uh, of, of the ready uh, and the, uh, the edges. <coughs> in the icosahedron, not. It's a little bit smaller. Yeah, you know, and that makes all the problem in calculating of geodesic grids. Yeah. So, uh, the Ginevac transformation has the, the octahedron, the octahedron, the tetrahedron, and the icosahedron. This axis, not those, not the cube, and not, uh, uh, and, uh, not the dodecahedron. But the symmetry groups are all included because icosahedron and, uh, and dodecahedron are dual. You can exchange uh, the, uh, the, 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 the faces uh, uh, to, the, to the, the corners. And this time, so they are uh, transformed uh, in the transformer. And also, uh, here, the uh, dodecahedron and, and the cube. So they are duals. So one can say, OK, uh, in principle, all the platonic solids are included in the Ginevra transformation. That's very important. But it, it has really that strange end of the cube octahedron, which is a half regular, you know. And therefore, nobody came uh, to, uh, to see that in a, uh, in a sequence, uh, you know, with that, those openings of the squares. Um, and uh, this is very much telling about uh, the, the properties uh, of, of the square. The square is not a structure. You know? It's an opening for the window. It's good. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't give stability. OK. So, and the third uh, transformation you can make uh, is with tensegrity. You see on the roof here, in the Swiss pavilion, the, the tetragonometry, it's exactly that here. A true invention of Buckminster Fuller. And it's necessary to say that all the geometrical uh, tetragonometries uh, were inventions, inventions by Buckminster Fuller and his students. <coughs> in, in each uh, student was, became an inventor. Uh, uh, and they modeled, of course, the whole uh, platonic solids uh, as antiquities. And this is icosahedron. And you see the Ginevac transformation. Uh, if you have uh, uh, flexible cables, uh, uh, you know, then you see <laughs> that the Ginevac transformation is really a coordinate transformation. Because you see, here are pairs, you, know. you, 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 you can do
do it in, in that way that they are coming together. That they are coming, uh, uh, coming together. And in the end, you have, you have the Cartesian coordinate cross. Uh, uh. So, what is a general transformation? It is, uh, it, it is a broader, wider frame of, of geometry in which the, our ration, rational system is a special case. It's exactly like relativity theory. Yeah, you know, Newton is not out, but included as a special case. And Cartesius is included, but it's a special case. So that we we have to talk a lot, uh, 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 and I, I hope we, we do that in, in the future a little bit uh, about the significance of the general transformation. And I think there is a lot still to be done. And. Uh, Donald Inger from Harvard Medical School, he, he gave a beautiful talk in our London conference in 2000. Uh, said, that the, the, what makes up for this geometry is the geometry of nature. Hmm. And, uh, and the, the genomic tra transformation opens up a new passage between um, what, we, what we call uh, the, the, the not living nature and the living nature. It's a passage. And in that passage is five-fold symmetry crucial. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Um, it's very very difficult to follow. <laughs> uh, extraordinary. I'm going to switch uh, the slides. Um, what an extraordinary uh, insight. Um, like Sherry, there's so many questions. Uh, I know that in, in our project, um, To, uh, to create a relation 
between Prime Minister Fuller, his army defense, and his is a is a privilege, and uh, the biological uh, uh, thinking uh, of living beings. Uh, and it's so interesting because in our uh, discussions, in our sessions at the School of Architecture in Venice, we spoke about the Dimaxion to the geoscope and the geoscope to the tensegrity sphere yeah. as the Earth, unambiguously the Earth. Yeah. And complementary, you speak about the micro scale all the way to the protein shell, which, which is a kind of an extraordinary breadth to have all of those scales. And in a way, our conversation spun on how it was two dimensional and then three dimensional, the search for planarity at that scale, and how both scales are irreducible. Yes. So I didn't answer, answer completely the, the, the question why uh, Martin Sefola called, uh, called his uh, first idea of the geodesics uh, the true planetarium. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's a rare idea indeed, but I suppose that, um, that he saw an advantage uh, uh, in uh, turning Speak of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
They speak not only of the house. Hmm. They speak of the relation of the house to the world, to the universe. Hmm. So, and that is the intuition of the hippies. They understood it. You know. Up to 1973, when Lloyd Kahn messed it up completely. Yeah, yeah. And then post 